Hey, Christy Glass here, coming to you with the most epic of Christy Glass Knits haul videos you have ever seen. It is my Scandinavia yarn haul. I will show you items that I acquired. Some of them I purchased, others were gifted to me, from Copenhagen, Denmark, Sweden, because I can't say the name of the town, I'm just gonna say Sweden, and Oslo and Bergen, Norway. I'm so excited about this haul video. Let's get started. First, we'll start with the non-yarn items, which are, I had to get some pins, patches, and stickers because that's what us knitters like to collect nowadays. I got a few Norway pins here. This, this umbrella here over the little uh, buildings is from Bergen because apparently it rains on repeat there. Here's my Norwegian flag pin. And then I got a patch, a little patch and a little sticker for my patch collection and my sticker collection. And then I didn't get anything in Sweden because I didn't really s stop at a place where there was a souvenir shop. Maybe the gas stations had, but I forgot to think of it when I was there. And then for my Danish souvenirs, I got patches, sticker, and a pin. So I'm all set to go with my souvenirs. My Copenhagen stops were at the beginning and the end of my trip. So in truth, I didn't spend a ton of time exploring the yarn of Copenhagen. Um, there was so many different yarn shops and I only ended up going to a few. The first that I went to was called Summer Fuglin. Uh, do I need to say that I'm not gonna pronounce any of these right? Because I'm totally not. But I'll show you a picture of the bag. Here it is, Summer Fuglin, which apparently I believe is the word for butterfly. And ironically, before I left on my trip, I, I chose a few patterns that I wanted to shop for and I chose a pair of mittens that make a butterfly on each hand. So it was perfect that I found the yarn for those mittens at that shop. And these are both from local farms, I believe. And this one, I was asking a woman at the store who was shopping and she read the back label because it's all in Danish and told me that um, it said the names of the sheep that this wool came from, which is Enya, Pit, Spurve, and Turna. That's so cute. So I got this very natural color and then of course I had to have some hot pink. This looks over dyed, like maybe the base has some gray in it, but it's a pretty bright pink. Most importantly is it's a higher contrast than the first time that I attempted to make the Norwegian mitten or the Scandinavian mitten. So this is pretty soft. It's not, it's not totally offending me with its scratchiness. The wool in Scandinavia is very rustic and I really liked the feel of these two. So I got these at that shop. They had a ton of colors in alpaca and wool and just a very small indie dyed section that I believe only had hedgehogs. So I didn't really pay much attention to that as I can get that easily in the States, but I tried to focus on the special Danish qualities of the wool. I did impulse purchase this Sadness Garn Borsted Alpaca. This is kind of reminds me of the Qing fiber base of the melted Suri Alpaca. And I just thought, yeah, I need to take a little bit of this pink fuzzy home with me as a souvenir also. So these are the three items I got from that local yarn shop on the very first day. And the next morning I headed straight to Norway. So I will come back to Copenhagen at the end. On my way to Norway, I stopped in at Angora Garnet, which is on the western coast of Sweden between Copenhagen and Oslo, probably about maybe two or three hours from Copenhagen. I'm not totally remembering correctly. But I became aware of Angora Garnet, I believe initially, from Kelborn Woolens when I was visiting there. They have a wonderful blog post on Bohu Stickening. So I'm going to link that down below. You really must read it, but I will just sort of um, scroll through this really quickly. This is a woman named uh, Emma. I want to get her name right. Emma Jacobson, who founded Bohu Stickening in the 1930s as a way to give women um, jobs in the depression and this is an original skein of the yarn. You won't be able to see it clearly here but I'll, again I'll link down below. Here are some of the initial 
pieces that the women made and then they, they became more fashionable. So here's some of the swatches with the technique and it's sort of a fair isle technique meets um, some purling and it's just special special knitting techniques that they developed and the business closed in 1969 so there's really wonderful images and information all on this uh, blog post here but you can see an example of one of their sweaters uh, here's one modeled and this woman right here she told me her name off camera and I'm going to show you how it's spelled I think she said Punila. It was kind of she kind of she kind of pronounced it like that. I I'm sure that was really bad. But she has 250 angora rabbits on her farm in Sweden. And she is carrying on the tradition of the boho sickening, which is sort of so special and so specific. And so I knew I really wanted to meet her. And so I stopped in. I only had probably 20 minutes to do so. So I went up to her shop and I met her and she told me about her, her business and I bought a few kits. So this, here's the thing, I'm going to insert a photo of the yoke on this sweater kit that I purchased. She says she intentionally does not include photos because I guess the technique of doing this yoke is not the same as Fair, fair Isle where you're following a chart and sort of checking yourself as you go. She said once you increase you're going to stop looking at the top and just keep going which makes me nervous as a knitter but I trust her. So she printed me the pattern in English. I really hope that I can read it and I got this kit. So the base of the sweater is going to be this light blue and it's an angora wool blend so I think that is in line with the boho stickening tradition I believe that they had angora in much of their yarn so this is so squishy and beautiful and lofty and this is the base of the sweater this nice light blue color and then the yoke will be made with this variety of colors and she you'll see this in the upcoming video but she said that she painstakingly works to exactly imitate the colors in the originals and so I if I had more time I would have asked her where did you get the originals how did you come across this you know so many questions that I didn't get a chance to ask her but obviously she's very committed to keeping this tradition alive and I was really happy to participate by purchasing a kit. So this is the sweater kit that I bought and this was not an inexpensive purchase. I really didn't understand how much it was when I bought it because I was still getting my feet wet in the whole krona versus dollar situation but that kit was I think around $300 which is a lot for a sweater kit. Um, this is a TAM kit and I again will insert a picture of the TAM here and I'm going to give this away one of my patrons today so you'll have a little piece of bohu stickening in your life it's the Galret Blot Beret you really must check out the Kelborn Woolens um, blog post there's books on it too uh, and then just search bohu stickening and then if you saw the Mary Lou Egan interview she talks about how she traded Elizabeth Zimmerman for a bohu stickening sweater that her sister had picked up at a garage sale she traded it for a uh, hand knit sweater that Elizabeth Zimmerman knit and actually it looks like the sweater that she knit looks a lot like Bohu Stickening. So if you go back and watch that episode around minute three you'll see her tell that story. And um, also I will put a link to Angora Garnet down below so if you happen to be traveling in Sweden she takes vi uh, shop visits to the farm uh, by appointment. So I just called the same day and she said people visit her nearly every day. What a special thing, because she's just on a farm kind of in the middle of nowhere. Really, really, really worth it, that Sweden stop. Loved it. Uh, I met the rabbits, but I, she wasn't allowed to show the rabbits because it's Swedish law that you can only show farm animals formally, I guess, six or seven times a year. So I wasn't able to bring the rabbits to you, but she did bring one out for a quick photo, and she has a photo of them here on her card. She's a beautiful woman. She has, I think, five children and just so sweet, amazing. You know how I feel about my women shepherdesses. I love them so much. 
So after Sweden, I headed to Varbit in Oslo and Lila, the owner of that shop, prepared a beautiful night for me. We did an interview, we had a, there was a fashion show, there was a poetry reading, I dyed my first skein of yarn, and I just felt so honored and it was just surreal to see all of the knitters from the Oslo and surrounding areas come together to meet me. It was so amazing, so thank you so much. I cannot wait to show you those videos. She dyes Norwegian yarn. She's very passionate about her home country's wool and most of the knitters there are the same way. So she has very little uh, superwash merino in her store. She had a little bit from some indie dyed companies, but I think she's phasing it out because she really wants to celebrate this Norwegian wool. And she explained in the interview, I'll get it wrong here, but she explained the difference between pelt wool and Norwegian wool and blends and you can go watch the video when it comes out, but I will just show you what I purchased. There was a designer there, and she doesn't have the, as she calls it, recipe out yet, but she was wearing this really cute color work, sort of loose sweater done with Lila's yarn. So I said, I want that sweater. And it had a natural feel to it, but then sort of, I wouldn't say it was speckles, but it had just different shots of color in it. So she helped me to pick out the base of the sweater, which there was only one skein of this left, so this is the rainbow <clears throat> uh, Venol Finslig fingering weight yarn. It's 85% lamb's wool and 15% pelt wool, so I think this is the special uh, blend that she gets. And then two different naturals to go with it. So for the base, I'm going to alternate, I guess, she was explaining it to me, it'll be like two two um, two rounds natural and one round with the color. So it will be even more spread out than this skein, which is a really fun thing I'd never thought of to do. And then there's a little bit of color work in the yoke and on the sleeve, and so we picked out this to go with it. So this is all Lila's wool from Varbit. And it is that same, uh, this is the same 85-15 split. So all of the women and one man, they were very passionate about using Norwegian wool and I can see why it's just beautiful and I think it will hold up and I think it will be really nice on my hands. Now she also uh, carries this yarn which is the Hilsvag, uh, why do I even try to say it? I'm just going to show you the label. But it's, um, it's, it's a knitting mill or a wool mill that's still in operation in the Norwegian area. This might be a picture of it. I don't believe that I I don't think this is the same place that I visited because I knitted because I visited a knitting a museum, but uh, so I'm getting some of the details wrong. There was just so much information, but this is a brand that's popular in Norway, and this is the I think this is the hundred percent pelt wool, and so I this really fabulous green just jumped out at me, and so I thought you know this this can be the base for my Christmas in July sweater, so I picked this up at Varbit also. I don't know if you're getting. The feel. This always reads a little darker on the screen, but it's to me it's pretty vibrant. There we go. That's a good shot. It's really vibrant. So this will be the base of my Christmas in July, and I knew that I was going to get my hands on some Rama for the yoke eventually on my trip, so I thought this is going to be good. And Lila was so sweet. She gifted all of this yarn to me, so thank you. Now you want to see what I dyed. This is her Norwegian wool again. And I can't wait to show you the process of dyeing yarn. It's actually a lot simpler than I even understood, but this is what I dyed. So you can see there's some pink and yellow and orange and different shades in there. And I was really shocked at how it turned out based on what I put in the pot, but it was a learning experience. And I kind of understood you dyers. I think I understand why you love doing it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to knit with this, but that was another souvenir from the night. Uh, lastly, I met the woman behind Norn. She's an indie dyer yarn, and this is a merino silk yak base superwash. And this color is called the Emperor of Mikkelgard. And she told me why she named it that, and now I'm forgetting because it's been a couple days and I'm having a little jet lag. But it was something about maybe history or stories of Norway. I'm sorry, I'm getting it wrong. Can you please comment below when you see this and tell us again, because I can't remember, but look at this gorgeous over-dyed yak 
situation, this plum eggplanty color. It's so beautiful. And Julian, it's in Paris. Uh, use this yarn for a pattern and it just takes one skein so that was she was really excited about that and so thank you for passing this on to me okay after also I headed north to Noor N-O-R-E which is a sort of farming community in a valley uh, up north of Oslo such a breathtaking drive from Oslo to Noor and I visited Garn Sur I am so excited to share the interview and the tour that I did there with on Helene and you have met her before on my channel as I did a little mini interview with her at EYF uh, on the EYF Super Saturday but I wanted to show you some of the yarn that I brought home from there as well that they generously gifted to me first of all the four women who died there the four refugees they each picked out a skein of yarn that they had dyed themselves to give to me and I think they did this on purpose it's sort of a fade situation so these are their the skinny single base and these are all in Norwegian, so this is Somai, S-O-M-M-A-Y, has pinks and some dark pinks and some green in there. This one is called Daglaus Kamol. Wow, I really don't know Scandinavian words. This is Your Fiori, and this is Digel Maken. Bad at that so these look just really beautiful together I think they would make a really nice shawl piece and I just feel honored that they picked these out for me so thank you very much and as I was on my way out the door I couldn't help myself I didn't realize they had DK weight yarn and I'm really into DK weight right now I didn't even let them put a label on I just had to have them so this is sort of natural with a bit of a periwinkle grayish blue stripe and then some neon speckles in it and I just think it's too much fun too much fun so I have four skeins I'm thinking I want to do something maybe like a strange brew or something with this yarn I don't know I'm gonna let it sit for a second because I don't think it's enough to make an entire sweater I think it has to pair with more yarn on the top but I couldn't be happier with this with this gift. So thank you, the ladies of Garn Sword. After I was in Noor, I drove to Bergen, which is on the western coast. It is sort of the gateway to the fjords. I mean, the fjords, I believe, last a long way up the uh, western coast of Norway, but it is an easier way to see some of them. Uh, we saw a lot, actually, just driving there, but then we also took a little boat tour, which was really fun, just two or three hours. And that's when I could see the knitting factory from the outside that I later visited. Um, and I knew that I wanted to visit the Norwegian Spirit at the train station, which I visited twice, and both times it was closed. So if you want to go to the Norwegian Spirit yarn shop in the train station in Bergen, please, please, please do some planning ahead. I just missed it. I missed it by minutes. <laughs> both times I tried because I had other things going on. So. Anita who messaged me I'm sorry I missed you I did stop by to try to say hi to you and you weren't quite in yet so make a note when you go to Bergen to not miss Norwegian Spirit I was staying in a hotel right across the street from a yarn shop that I'm not even going to try to pronounce it starts with an H and uh, they had all the Rama so I have had been gifted a few um, skeins of Rama from Ellie of Skein Deer Knits so I was de definitely aware of it <clears throat> But it's very affordable yarn, it's very Norwegian yarn, and they have all the colors in the rainbow. I know that Espas Trico has a whole rainbow wall of it right now, which if the yarn shop that I build in my head has a rainbow wall for color work for sure, and so they are doing it exactly right. Christmas in July has 12 colors in the yoke, and the other element of Christmas in July, at least the one that Tannis has in the adult version, to me it looks like two different sweaters were cut in half and sewn together. So it was really important to me that the yoke told one story and the rest of the sweater told another story. Maybe you get that, maybe you don't. So I went to that shop and I picked out the 12 colors and I had some help from, I think her name is Johanna, and she ended up giving me a little tour uh, of the shop for the channel as well. So I don't even think I can hold all of these at once. Here's 10 of the colors. You get the idea with the 10. They're bright, 
And they, they have other than, you know, I of course picked all the brights, but they have less bright colors as well and the natural colors. Also, um, I started swatching with 11 and 12 <laughs> already on my trip. So you can see how it comes together. I'm swatching, I guess this is considered swatching in the round because I'm looping my, my yarn around the back. So I just started working on some color work and I can tell you it's really wonderful to work with. It's nice and sticky and I'm really excited to pair that yoke that I just showed you with this as the base. I know. It might be ugly. I, it's worth the risk. I'm excited about it. So that is the Rama, the truly um, accessible Norwegian yarn is what I got there. Uh, and coincidentally, I believe, so Siri from Oslo, she came to the Oslo event. She is also very active in our um, Sunday Night Shawl Knit Along group on Ravelry. She knit me these mittens, which I think is out of the same Rama. Aren't these gorgeous? So this is such a great gift, and I used them because, guess what, Norway is cold in the summer. So thank you for that beautiful gift. I can't wait to make more of those mittens with the leftover Rama, because I know I'm going to have tons left over. Okay, I returned to Copenhagen towards the end of my trip, and what was cool about sharing about my trip while I was on the trip, which I sometimes don't do, is I got messages from people, and there is so much fiber in Scandinavia, I couldn't even touch, you know, a quarter of it. And one person told me about this lovely place called Kit Couture. Now, I do like coming up with my own ideas when I do knitting, but I am not opposed to a kit. And this Kit Couture place had such, to me, innovative designs that were accessible and fun and things that I want to knit. So I'm really looking forward to showing you the video from Kit Couture. I they present the kits in these gorgeous boxes and I just could not bring the boxes home. So I will insert a photo here to show you how just amazing it is when you get this box and open it up and find your kit inside. There's, um, I got three kits. There was one summer top that was striped, and so this is the alpaca. That is the natural base of that kit. And the stripes are with the bright blue, and I, uh, I got that right here, the mohair. So this is my first kit. This is the smaller kit, and it comes with the pattern. And then it shows you the different combinations that it's available in on the back. So here's what it will look like. Isn't that fun? I thought it was really fun and different. And the designs, the patterns, are not on Ravelry that I can see. And I don't know if they sell them separately. So it's sort of a special uh, find, this find. This says it's by Iben Hoj. Here's the name of the designer. I was pretty excited to figure out that this existed in Copenhagen. So that was my first pattern. Now my next one is the Almo pullover. And this is a mohair with special cuff detail. Here's the color variations on the back that they have. And in the shop they had a swatch of just cuffs. So you could see what the cuffs would be. The whole sweater is knit up with these two held together, the merino nylon and the mohair mixed together. So I have lots of these little guys. The cuff has the detail of the orange and the silver. I saw a lot of contrasting cuffs and collar details in the department stores of Copenhagen. I'm kind of obsessed with this right now. It, it definitely influenced me to purchase this kit. You'll see it in the video, but this catalog has everything in it that they offer. And they're constantly coming out with new stuff. In fact, the pattern that they're dropping in October, I tried to convince them to give it, sell it to me before I left, but she said she didn't have everything ready, but it is so, 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 so cute. The last kit that I got, she didn't have the pattern at the time. I'm not sure why. They have a warehouse where they distribute their online orders, and this is just their showroom, so I was kind of lucky to be even able to take home a kit from there, but the pattern is sort of this herringbone stitch with the multicolors, and it's a vest. So, she gifted me this bag, and it's full of the yarn to make this vest. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. There's the Highland wool, 
There's the merino nylon, which I think I could have used the, the remain. Well, what do they? What can they do? Um, the merino nylon, and all that. This is alpaca. More alpaca. So all of these colors together, you can see, are going to work together to make this really special piece. One more sort of variegated in here too, yeah. Oh wait, here's the color of it. Oh, she said she didn't, oh, I think she didn't have the pattern in English is what it was. Here it is, look. Isn't that cute? And here's all the colors. This one I think only came in one color. <gasps> I'm so excited about this. I love herringbone stitch and I haven't done herringbone in ages. And it's so thick. And it's just going to be such a fun, it's going to be such a fun project. So I, I really showed some restraint, honestly, in that shop, only buying three kits. I was very close to getting a fourth. As it is, I don't even know when I'm going to have time to knit all this stuff. But I am averaging, so this is September 1st when I'm recording this, and I'm averaging about five projects a month. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Five times 12, that's 60 projects a year. That's, that's a lot of knitting. Finally, I went to the Woolstock Cafe in a lovely neighborhood in Copenhagen, which again, I cannot pronounce. She's been in business just, I think, since this year. I think it's very new. And it's a yarn shop and it's a cafe. And Louise, who is the cutest thing I met in Copenhagen, she bakes all of the the pastries, she has the tea there, she has delicious chocolate that she gifted Jason and me some, and she also gifted me when I inquired about the teapot and the cups, she gifted some to me. So, so nice. I picked up this bag for myself, and like I need another tote bag, but I just had to. And uh, I also picked up a small one for um, my Patreons, so this will be given away to one of you as well. So I have a tote bag and a TAM kit to give away today to my patrons because I wanted to thank you for supporting me. So this trip was not a patron trip, it was my anniversary trip, but when I travel, typically, it is because of generous donations from you patrons and I'm just going to Scandinavia and having my eyes open so much just taught me that there is still so much out there that I haven't touched yet. So. I will be able to hopefully go on some more adventures because now I have the generous support of you patrons and so I'm always thinking of you when I'm traveling and so I picked these up for you. I guess that's my haul. It seems, it seems short now that it's over, right? But I think, I think I made some really good choices on the items that I purchased. Thank you to the people who gave me this so much yarn uh, so generously. That was so nice of you and thanks to all of you who did impromptu videos with me because I half of this wasn't even planned and it was so incredible that I just had my camera with me and I could tell you my story and you said sure you know come look take a look for all the people please 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 tell me you've put these countries on your list to visit as a fiber journey they are so worth it all the people there are so into knitting and it's just this, it's a cultural expectation, it's a cultural norm and it was just so inspiring and so beautiful and I cannot wait to show you the videos about all of my individual journeys that led to the yarn that I showed you today. Thanks for checking in to Christy Glass Knits and I'll see you later. Bye!